Hey everyone, I'm Brian from The Builder Place. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a SMT rework station. This rework station uses hot air to reflow the solder to remove the parts. This uh, system, I think I paid about $50 for. And if it's something that's your hobby, that you're going to be working on surface mount technology, I would highly recommend buying a hot air system like this, or if you have the money to buy something a little better. I've had good results with this, removing parts and actually reflowing parts. So the part that I'm going to take off today is this 20 pin quad flat pack or quad pack. It has J leads on it. So the leads kind of bend down underneath of it. And I've selected this nozzle to do the work. This nozzle fits right over top of the part and extends to the lead. So I'm going to show you how I use this tool to remove that part. I have the nozzle is installed and if you know when you take this out of the holder it automatically starts to heat up and when you put it back in it'll cool off and then eventually it'll shut off once the temperature drops down to a cool state which it didn't get that hot so it didn't run very long. Next step I want to do is set the camera up so you can watch how I actually do the extraction. I have the part that I'm going to take off here in focus right here. I don't know if you notice, but uh, this piece of material that I'm using is just a piece of ceramic tile. It's, it works really good for uh, this type of stuff. You don't have to worry about if you're soldering or whatever, you don't have to worry about burn your bench top or you have chemicals that you're using that would stain any kind of thing. This is an easy thing to clean or if it gets damaged, just throw it away and, and get another one. So I've turned the system off and I just want to show you what my target I wanted to do. I want to have this nozzle to come down on top of this part and leave just a little bit of air space around the bottom edge here. For the air to flow out. So this nozzle is going to heat up the part and the leads only basically. It will heat the rest of the board a little bit but you want to focus all your heat here because that's all you're, you're just taking this one part off. You don't need to reheat all the rest of these parts here. You just want to heat this part and this comes in handy especially if you have other parts around that you don't want them to reflow and take a chance of them falling off or getting bumped. So the plan is to keep this as close as I can to the board. Um, the, the shaking I can't fix. Normally this hot air gun will be in a fixture to hold it steady, but we're gonna to try to do the best we can and start to reflow. Okay, we'll start to reflow this part, but first I wanna heat up the board area a little bit around it, because it is cool here in this shop that I'm working in. I want to bring the temperature of the board up a little bit. This brings the temperature of the the hot air gun up a little bit to the temperature and it seems to be about the temperature now. So I'm going to bring this down on top of this part and best I can. You can see it's a little nervous, a little shaky. We'll try to keep that part that nozzle just a little bit above the board. And the part is loose, take it off, and we're done. Now, as you can see, there are excess solder left on the land, so we need to take off. But we'll do that with this solder extractor real quick. While I'm waiting for the solder extractor to heat up, I wanted to mention that some of these parts can be temperature sensitive. So when you're removing the part and if you want to replace the same part, you think maybe there's a problem with that, that IC and you just want to take it out of the circuit to test the circuit and then plan to put it back in. If it's a heat sensitive part, you need to bake the moisture out of that part. So you need to go to the manufacturer's website, find the data sheet on that and find out if it's moisture sensitive and if it needs to be baked. Uh, 
we normally, where I work, if we take a part off, we never put it back on. So we don't deal with baking parts. All our new parts are kept in a a um, a dry a dry oven. So they are kept below, well below the manufacturer's recommendation for moisture. But if you get this part hot too fast, the moisture inside will will become steam and it'll do damage to the part. And I've had that happen before on one of our boards. Before I knew a lot about moisture sensitive parts, we had one part that every time that they hot air soldered it, it would uh, damage. If we soldered it by hand, one pin at a time, we didn't have that problem. So be aware of that if you're working with surface mount, especially the larger parts, like the part that's over here. That was probably moisture sensitive more so than this smaller part. The solder extractor is now up to temperature and ready to remove that excess solder. Now, one thing that you will not see me do, but in a rare occasion is to have any solder wick on this board. I don't like using solder wick. I believe it does more damage than it does good. It does a nice job. I've seen a lot of videos where people use uh, solder wick, but I think it brings the board up to too much of a temperature. So I'm gonna show you this little trick real quick. Take the regular solder extractor, and I hope you can see this good. You just take and start the vacuum of the solder extractor. They just put it on the lands and just walk across the lands. And I'm not doing too good a job because I'm trying to watch the camera and watch it at the same time. But we're removing all that excess solder. I got almost everything you got down here to get. Keep the solder extractor vertical, no downward pressure, and just walk over the lands. Done all that desolder, and I can put my finger on. It's not even warm at all. There's, it's not any different temperature right here where I just did all that removal. Of I'm gonna turn it up this way. I didn't do too good a job as I was trying to reach over the camera, but I see some solder still there. But basically, my point is, is that this has not even gotten warm. So we've only done one temperature cycle by removing this part. So the part was put down with one cycle and then we've done one more cycle of heat and we're going to put one more cycle to put the part back on. So to do this repair, this board is only going to get three thermal cycles. So that is a positive thing in you know, your reliability of your board.